Sub you to Executor23 here, and I'm back with another video. Alright, guys, I'm here to give you guys my review on the WWE pay per view Elimination Chamber. Before I get into the review, first and foremost, shout out to the brother Reese the Watcher and George Spade for showing their support for the wrestling talk video. So, the first match that we start on the uh, kickoff show it was Buddy Murphy versus Akira Toriyasawa for the uh, Cruiserweight Champion. Um, this match was pretty good. I actually like this match a lot. A lot of momentum in this, in this match, and I like Buddy Murphy a lot. Um, there was a moment in the match that I liked when um, Buddy Murphy and uh, Akira Toriyasawa was on top of the ropes, and Bur um, Buddy Murphy lifts Akira Toriyasawa up, and then um, uh, Akira Toriyasawa uh, did the uh, uh, he did the hurricane with flipped uh, uh, Buddy Murphy. Man, that shit was crazy, man. But um, the match between these two guys was pretty good, man. It was a very good match. Um, it was back and forth between both the guys. Um, there was uh, another moment in the match that I, I liked. It was uh, when Bernie Murphy was uh, hanging on the, on the ropes. And um, uh, Kerry Toyosama hit the, uh, the, 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 the splash on him. And that was sick as well. But um, yeah, this match was pretty good. Uh, Buddy Murphy hits his, uh, his finisher, uh, Murphy's Law. And he pretty much he, uh, beat it. Kerry Toyosama. But um, the next uh, match of the pay-per-view uh, was uh, the uh, uh, match for the uh, Women's uh, Tag Team Championship to be crowned the new Tag Team Championship. It was the Iconics versus uh, Naomi Kamala, Nia Jax and Tien uh, uh, Tamina, um, who else? The Riot Squad, uh, and uh, Sonny Deville and Bank and Bailey. Um, I'm going to give you guys the eliminations, then I'm going to talk about the fight, uh, the match, excuse me. Um, the first elimination came was the Iconics. They eliminated Naomi and Carmella. Um, man, I was uh, I was kind of just sad to see Naomi get pinned. Um, I think the reason why she was the one to get pinned first because of the thing that happened early on um, a couple days ago with her and um, Jimmy Uso when they both got uh, pulled over by the police. But... I was actually sad just to see why did Naomi get pinned. They should at least have Carmella get pinned, but why? I guess the WWE is just pretty much um, uh, punishing Naomi. But anyway, after the uh, Iconics eliminated Naomi and Carmella, then um, Nia Jax and Tamina came in, and they eliminated the uh, Iconics. Then after that, Nia Jax and, and Tamina again eliminated the Riot Squad. Then um, after that... Um, there was a scene in the uh, in the match as well where um, Nia Jack was was getting ready to uh, you know um, run over um, uh, Bailey, but she missed and she ran into the pot and basically she threw herself out of the uh, out of the match and basically um, the rest of the uh, uh, Becky Bailey Sonya Deville and Mandy Rose basically beat up Tamina and basically they pinned Tamina and they both uh, were got eliminated uh, basically. Uh, Tamina took the fall, took the fall, so they could still make uh, Nia Jax look strong. But after um, Nia Jax and Tamina got eliminated, um, Banks and Bailey goes and eliminated Son of the Ville and Mandy Rose, uh, which I, which I uh, think was a no-brainer. We all knew uh, um, Sasha Banks and Bailey was gonna win, um, but um, to tell you the truth, though, this was a pretty good match. I actually did like it a lot, but um, like I said, it was just a no-brainer. That um, they both uh, won, but to be honest though, um, they actually do deserve it though. But like I said, it wasn't no brainer, but it was still a good match. All right, so we move on to the uh, next uh, match of the pay per view. It was the Usos versus um, Shane McMahon and um, The Miz for the SmackDown Tag Team Championships. Um, I would say that this match was okay, but I was a little bit surprised. That the WWE gave the Usos the tag team champions after what happened to uh, Jimmy Uso, um, yeah, a couple days ago with uh, he had the application, the application with the police officer. I thought it was was getting to that point that a Miz uh, would hit the um, skull uh, crush finale on um, Jimmy Uso, and I thought it was over from there. But then Jay Uso uh, rolled up um, the Miz and basically. Um, they win the belt. Like I said, I that was a shocker because I thought Jimmy Uso was going to take the fall so that, that at least uh, the WWE could at least punish him for his allocation with, uh, with the police officer. But 
Uh, it looks like the WWE gave the, the Uso the, uh, the tag team champions, and now they are the six six time tag team champions. That was a very a shocker to me, but um, it was a, like I said, it was an okay match. So we move on to the next match of the uh, the pay per view. It was Bobby Lashley and Leo Rush uh, handicap match where um, Bobby Lashley Intercontinental Championship was on the line, and um, they it was a two on one against. Um, Finn Balor. Um, like I said, I wasn't really, I wasn't really feeling, the, uh, feeling this match. We all knew Finn Balor was going to win this match because, um, if you guys remember, Finn Balor was on a losing streak, and um, basically, uh, WWE pretty much gave Finn Balor the champion because, as we all know, Finn Balor has been pretty much upset with the company uh, for the last couple of uh, weeks. And um, there was, like I said, there was rumors of him going to All Elite Wrestling. So WWE did what the, what's best for business and give um, Finn Balor a champion, so at least to keep him happy. But um, still, though, I still thought it was best if they at least keep the belt on Bobby Lashley, you know, keep his character going. I don't know what they're going to do with him next, but uh, I guess that, that's WWE's way, man. But anyway, um, Finn Balor goes on to hit the coup de grace on um, Leo Rush, and he wins the Intercontinental Champion. Then um, at the end, um, Bobby Lashley uh, beats up Leo Rush, and basically it was over from there. All right, so we move on to the uh, next uh, match of the pay-per-view, which I won't even call it a match. I call it a squash match. It was Ronda Rousey defend her Raw, um, Women's Championship against Ruby Riot. Um, basically, like I said, it was a squash match. I mean, the match went on for like three minutes. Ronda did what she does best. She basically... Uh, Weaken up the arm, and then basically she hits the uh, the arm bar, and basically it was a squash match. And like I've been telling everybody about Ronda Rousey, um, if the opponent that Ronda Rousey uh, can't carry the match, the match is not going to last long. And you see it tonight; the match didn't last long. But um, after that, um, Charlotte Flair came in the ring. As you guys can see in the picture, she confronted um, Ronda Rousey. Then uh, Becky Lynch comes in, and then she took the crush, and she started to beat the crap out of Charlotte Flair. And then um, uh, she gave the crush to Ronda Rousey, and basically um, Becky Lynch attacked uh, Ronda Rousey, and basically she started to beat her up. And once again, Ronda Rousey no sell the uh, crush attack. And uh, basically, there was a scene where she got she got uh, she got uh, busted open, but once again. I wasn't really filled the match. I, I knew it was just a squash match, man. But like I say, I don't know. It was just a squash match. It was born. But anyway, we move on to the next slide of the pay-per-view. It was Baron Corbin versus um, Braun Strowman in a no disqualification match. Um, to me, I felt like this was just another filter match, you know, just to uh, keep time going, man. And um, like I said, I wasn't really feeling this match at all, man. Um, there was, uh, what's the name, what he did, uh, Barry Coleman was, uh, he was basically beating up Braun Strowman with the candlestick, you know, trying to weaken him down. And then he started to um, hit him with the, uh, with the chair. And then, um, Braun Strowman brought in the, uh, the table. Then after that, uh, Braun Strowman hit his, uh, hit, hit the running power slam, um, uh, with uh, had um, he hit the power running power slam and Colbert went right through the uh, right through the table, and basically he was getting ready to uh, you know, secure the win. Uh, basically, Drew, Mac uh, Drew McIntyre came out, and uh, basically uh, he started to beat up um, Barrett Coleman with the chair. And then um, then uh, what's his name? Oops. Sorry about that. I had the UFC running in the background. But anyway, um, like I was saying, uh, Drew McIntyre was beating up. Um, uh, Brian, uh, Braun Strowman with the chair, and then um, Braun Strowman managed to fight back, and then uh, Bobby Lashley came out, and basically Bobby Lashley started to hit, uh, um, started to hit him with the chair, and then they just started to beat up on Braun um, badly, man, just beat him up badly, and then um, they set up the uh, the table, one stack, two stack, they went on a top of the uh, the stair steps, and basically they triple uh, power bomb uh, Braun Strowman through the uh, table, and basically. Barry Corbin um, pinned him, one, two, three, and basically it was over from there. And um, I'll say it here right now. Um, it looks like the uh, WWE is basically turning um, 
um, Braun Strowman to uh, Java now. I mean, the, he's just this big guy, and then as soon as he gets in the ring, they, he, 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 they just make him look like shit, man. You know, this dude had a lot of potential. You know, he had the potential to be a uh, WWE champion, and WWE keep mis mis misusing him, and it really sucks, man. I would like to see Braun become champion one day, but once again, uh, Vince McMahon hates Braun, Braun Strowman. But anyway, uh, we move on to the final match of the pay-per-view, and it was the men's elimination chamber, and it was Daniel Bryan defend his WWE championship against AJ Styles, Samoa Joe, Jeff Hardy, Randy Orton, and Kofi Kingston. And um, the first two to start off the match was uh, Daniel Bryan and uh, Samoa Joe. Now, I, when I saw Samoa Joe was the first one to get eliminated, I knew he was going to be the first one to get eliminated. I mean, what I was meant to say, he was the first one to start. I knew he was going to be the first one to get eliminated. And eliminated went in straight um, in this order. Uh, AJ Styles eliminated Samoa Joe. And after that, Daniel Bryan eliminated Jeff Hardy. Um, there was a scene in um, in the match that I liked that when uh, AJ Styles' body was on the, uh, the term taco and um, Jeff Hardy was on top and he hit the uh, swan time bomb on um, AJ Styles. That shit was fucking sick, man. I like that. But after that, um, after Daniel Bryan, uh, after that, um, Daniel Bryan eliminated Jeff Hardy. Then after that, uh, Randy Orton comes in. He eliminated AJ Styles. Uh, when AJ Styles was getting ready to do the uh, the um, phenomenal fall, um, uh, basically uh, Randy Orton came out of nowhere and he hit the RKO. And basically he eliminated AJ Styles. And um, after that, uh, Kofi Kingston eliminated um, Randy Orton with Trouble in Paradise. Then it came down to Daniel Bryan versus Kofi Kingston. And um, a lot of people was going crazy, including myself, because I wanted Kofi to win. You know, it's... It's the first time um, we needed somebody to be champion. Um, it's, like I said, it's been a while since we never had a black heavyweight champion. And it was pretty much with Kofi's moment to uh, win the champion. But uh, Vince McMahon sees something elsewhere. And basically um, what happened was that uh, Kofi Kingston had many opportunities to beat Daniel Bryan, but Daniel Bryan didn't want to go away. And there was this one last uh, moment where... Uh, Kofi Kingston, uh, basically, when uh, Kofi Kingston was trying to do the running on um, uh, Bulldog, he basically ran into the uh, ran into the under the um, into the glass. Man, I thought he was done, man. <laughs> I thought he was done. But um, um, after that, uh, basically, uh, Daniel Bryan goes off to uh, basically they started a fight at the top of the uh, the the, um, the top of the uh, the limited chamber. Um, Daniel Bryan fell off. Um, Kofi hisses once again. Trouble in Paradise again. Um, he, uh, he, he, uh, Daniel Bryan kicks out again. And basically, um, after that, Daniel Bryan hits his finisher and he beat Kofi Kingston. And, um, uh, basically, the, uh, the momentum was over, man. Um, like I said, man, uh, pretty much that was the best, uh, uh let's see, do, 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 do. Yep, that was the best match of the whole pay per view. Um, it was a very fun, fun match, man. I really did like it. That's to me, like I said, that was the, the best match on the whole pay-per-view, man, and um, it really sucks that it had to end that way. You know, I think that Kofi pretty much did deserve that moment, but once again, WWE sees elsewhere. You know how Vince McMahon is, man, you know, but yeah, man, like I said, uh, my ratings for this pay-per-view, I'll probably give it uh, 5 out of 10. I'll give it 5 out of 10. I felt like the main event and the women's uh, elimination chamber basically got uh, Save this pay per view, but all the other matches was just pretty much uh, mediocre. But yeah, you guys tell me what you guys think of the pay per view and the review, man. Um, I am out. I'll see you guys next time. I'm out.